Hi, I'm Mark Spahalski, Senior VoIP Engineer at VoIP Supply. I have this AdTrend NetVanna 1531P with me, and we did an unboxing a little while ago. You may have seen it, and if you haven't, we'll post the link in the description below. But we're going to do a basic configuration on this switch, which might be something applicable to a project you're working on. It's a fantastic little switch for a small VoIP deployment, or if you're deploying wireless access points. We'll set up a VLAN and set up some basic IP networking and get started on this switch. Let's take a look. So I've created a very basic scenario that we are going to use to configure our Adtran NetVanta 1531P switch. This scenario includes a couple of Grandstream phones, some GXP 2170s. We also have a UCM 6100 series PBX and just a generic router that we're going to be using uh, with an IP address of 10.10.10.254 and the switch will be 10.10.10.1, which is actually the factory default IP address that we'll always have coming out of the box. Additionally, just to make things a little bit more interesting, we're going to be using the switch as a DHCP server to provide IP addresses to any device uh, connected to it, such as the Grandstream phones and even the UCM, although this will typically be statically addressed. All right, let's take a look at the switch. As mentioned before, the default IP address for the Advanced 1531P is going to be 10.10.10.1. Default credentials are admin and password. You can access this on regular HTTP or HTTPS. And something to note is that on every Adtran NetVanta or even total access device, at least a current total access device, is that the user interface is very similar to every other device. This makes it easy to navigate, uh, especially if there is a device you haven't used before or have not used often. Everything is kind of always in the same place which is very, very helpful. Now, when you first log into the switch, you are in the system summary page, which gives you a basic rundown of what's going on. In the switch currently, uh, you have the system time, system date, what memory is being used, CPU utilization, your used and free space on the file system, time server, which is currently not configured, and we'll go ahead and do that in just a second. And you may also see something like this, a warning potential problem has been detected with your system. You can click on that to see what's going on. And this is showing because there is no default gateway defined, and we'll do that in just a little bit. So let's just go back to the system summary here. Further scrolling down, you have a little bit of a summary of the switch ports and what's going on. We can see that I am currently connected to the switch on gig 01, and we also see all switch ports are down to 12 because nothing else is plugged in. This scenario that I've created is just hypothetical. We're not actually going to be plugging phones in. Let's first configure the time server and the default gateway for the switch. Starting with the time server, to do that, click on the time server link on the system summary page. Under time server in the drop down box, select SNTP. Because I am in New York, I'm going to leave this as Eastern time and I like to use pool.ntp.org. Just a personal choice. You can use what you like. I leave everything else default, click apply. And to set the default gateway, I go to the data dropdown, select default gateway. And change this to the router we have selected in our scenario. So dot two, five, four, click modify. Something important to note is that when layer three, when routing is turned off on the switch, the default gateway page is where you assign the default gateway if layer 3 was turned on. If routing was turned on, we would use the routing page. Click on IP routing to turn that on and then you can configure your static routes. If we click on the ports link under data, this will allow us to modify the switch ports. Now right now they are all set to an access port for VLAN 1. If you go to the particular switch port you would like to modify click on the membership drop down box you can select it to be a trunk port or an access port for VLAN 1. The reason VLAN 1 is the only one offered right now is because we only have that one VLAN created. To create a VLAN we click on the VLAN link and click on add new VLAN. Now we don't need to do this for our, for our scenario so this is just a view of what you would have to fill out to create a new VLAN you would fill in the name, VLAN ID, maybe 10, 20, for example, 
And because it's a layer 3 switch, we can make this a VLAN interface, giving it an IP address. If we select static, for example, we can define the IP address for that VLAN interface. But we don't need to do that for now. Let's create the DHCP server on this switch that we talked a little bit about. And to do that, we want to go back into system, DHCP server. And we're going to create a new pool. We'll just call this VoIP, for example. Click on add. And let's fill out our range here, our subnet. So it's going to be 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 and a 24 bit subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Going to create the pointer to the default gateway 10.10.10.254. And we can leave the least time as one day. Under the optional configuration tab, we can define a couple other things. Um, some of this may or may not be necessary for your network primary DNS. Just for the example, let's make it a Google DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 and TFTP server would refer probably to your phone system. Um, in this example, it would be the Grandstream UCM 6100 series, whatever that is. IP address is, is what we put into here. Let's just make up a number 10.10.10.250 NTP server. Let's make it the 1531p 10.10.10.1. And because this is the East Coast, a minus five offset. Numbered options would point any device pulling DHCP options into either, for example, a TFTP server here, which is kind of redundant with an option 66, sometimes I like to put that in there. 10.10.10.250. So any device or phone that uses option 66 would then be sent the ASCII string of 10.10.10.250, basically telling it to use this as its TFTP server. Let's just add that. And click apply. Now we have our DHCP server pool created for any device on the 10.10.10 network. Any device pulling a lease would then show up under current leases. Right now there is nothing because there really isn't anything connected to our switch, but this is how it would be set up. Now we saw that all of the switch ports are assigned to access as VLAN 1, and VLAN 1 is associated with the 10.10.10 network. And the way we can verify that is if we go into the data drop down and click on IP interfaces and we can see that the default VLAN IP address 101010.1 which is the VLAN IP is associated with VLAN 1 so what that means is anything connected to a port with an access port defined as VLAN 1 will receive DHCP on VLAN 1 from the pool we just created. Let's look at our diagram again real quick just to go over some of the things we did and how it's going to work with our scenario. So all of these switch ports are assigned as access ports to VLAN 1. So all of these phones will be grabbing DHCP on VLAN 1 from the switch. The UCM 6100 series can be used with DHCP to grab an IP address on VLAN 1 or it can be statically assigned. We use the IP address of 10.10.10.250. Also, all devices pulling DHCP from the switch will be pointing towards the router for the default gateway, meaning whenever it needs to go out to the internet or network it does not know, it will be going to 10.10.10.254. Pretty simple. So there are a couple of things that you might also want to change in your brand new switch that comes out of the box because everything is set to default. We probably want to change the default password and to do that we can go into system, passwords, and we can choose whether or not to enable encryption and I would always suggest doing that just so that if someone logs into your command line interface that may have access but you don't want them to see everyone else's password. We want to enable the encryption so that shows as an encrypted string in the command line. We can also add additional administrative users in case um, someone needs to have their own unique password. Or if you want someone to have temporary access, just give them a temporary account that can be removed later on. 
you can also change your passwords for all the other services in the switch for example the enable password telnet ssh and uh, all your other services here something else you might want to change is the host name and dns information for your switch to do that under system hostname dns you can change the host name right here um, select whatever domain you may be using for your network and define the primary and secondary dns information for your switch you can also turn on things like LLDP, which might be useful uh, if you have multiple switches and need to identify them um, by their IP address and model. So that's it. We really didn't have to do a whole lot to get this configured for our scenario, and clearly it's capable of a whole lot more. So I encourage you to do some research on the product if you think it's interesting. Uh, definitely worth taking a look at. One of my favorites, as I've mentioned before. So that's a very basic configuration of the switch. Uh, it does have a lot more features. It is a layer three switch. It will do inter VLAN routing. And if you have a multi VLAN environment, that's super important. Um, awesome switch for small deployments. Again, small phone deployments, access points, or just maybe the small office, uh, anything that's gonna utilize that PoE and those gigabit ports. Um, if you have any more questions on Adtran, we have a lot of different products from Adtran. Give us a call, 800-398-VoIP and voipsupply.com. We would love to answer any questions about it. Again, I'm Mark Spahalski, Senior VoIP Engineer at VoIP Supply, and thanks for watching.